Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here the whole time, welcome back. We're excited to have you. Um, this video is a really great topic. We are gonna be talking about one of the biomarkers that I feel like it's missed a lot in labs or not properly communicated in labs to patients, but plays a huge role in symptoms. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button on this video. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm, and then go ahead and share it with a friend. That really helps us to get our content out there just help more women, which is our whole goal here. So today we are talking about sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG. Um, so sex hormone binding globulin is an important marker when we're thinking about the way that our hormones are transported through the body um, and hormonal based symptoms. So sex hormone binding globulin, what is it? Well, it's a glycoprotein, and what it does is it transports hormones from point A to point B in the body. And preferentially, it really transports testosterone and DHT, so your androgens, right? And then it does also transport some estrogen, but it really, really transports that testosterone and DHT. Um, that's why sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG, plays a huge role in balancing that level of testosterone in a woman's body. And so if it's high or low, right, um, we can end up with a lot of symptoms. So with low sex hormone binding globulin, we usually see low sex hormone binding globulin in patients with polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and in patients with polycystic ovary syndrome, right, we notice that, that this low sex hormone binding globulin can lead to things like hirsutism. So uh, hair growth, oily skin, acne, right? And we know that low sex hormone binding globulin is also associated with insulin resistance. So that's why oftentimes in polycystic ovary syndrome patients, treating insulin resistance, even without um, any sort of weight concerns or even sometimes without blood sugar concerns, um, can play a huge role in treating the symptoms of polycystic ovary syndrome and making kind of the whole picture better. So what else lowers sex hormone binding globulin? Um, so low sex hormone binding globulin can come from a few things. So corticosteroids lower sex hormone binding globulin. Um, the use of androgens, so the use of like testosterone lower sex hormone binding globulin. Um, hypothyroidism, not thyroid medication, but hypothyroidism can lower sex hormone binding globulin. And then like we just talked about, uh, insulin resistance plays a huge role in lowering sex hormone binding globulin. And we know that optimal levels of sex hormone binding globulin actually lower your rate for type two diabetes, um, lower your risk for PCOS and lower your risk for general metabolic syndrome. So it is important to kind of get into check. So let's talk about the other side of sex hormone binding globulin. That's high sex hormone binding globulin. So high sex hormone binding globulin, right? You're going to have symptoms usually of low testosterone. So if you're one of those patients that has a normal serum testosterone, but nobody has ever run a free and total testosterone, this is why you need to run that, right? So what happens is when we run total testosterone, total testosterone is just the amount of testosterone that you have in your body. Well, that doesn't tell us very much information, right? What we wanna look at is also the free testosterone. So free testosterone is not bound up by sex hormone binding globulin. Okay, so when testosterone is bound up by sex hormone binding globulin, it's basically metabolically inactive, and it's pretty much what I tell my patients is put into storage, right? So what you want is that free testosterone to actually be free, available, and ready to do the work in the body and ready to mitigate your symptoms. So usually if you have higher sex hormone binding globulin, um, it will look like symptoms of lower androgens, right? So you can have low libido, low muscle mass, fatigue, weight gain, um, low metabolism, um, changes in mood and changes in um, focus and attention can all be related to higher sex hormone binding globulin and lower levels of free testosterone. So what raises our sex hormone binding globulin? So one of the main contributors raising sex hormone binding globulin is the use of oral estrogens. Okay, any oral estrogen. This is why when patients, when menopausal, when menopausal patients are on testosterone replacement and an oral estrogen, it makes very little sense to me because oral estrogen we know raises sex hormone binding globulin. Um, we see this a lot in our patients on oral contraceptives, right? So studies show that oral contraceptives can raise sex hormone binding glo globulin levels by up to seven times the level of somebody who's not on an oral contraceptive. And even after they come off of it, sex hormone binding globulin levels usually remain uh, elevated by like two to three times. So it's really significant. Um, so that's something to consider, right? So if you're on testosterone replacement therapy and an oral version of estrogen, 
you know, they might be kind of canceling each other out a little bit. And it might be something to consider in terms of a uh, dosing route that we need to kind of consider with that. Um, other things that raise sex hormone binding globulin. So there is a general uh, raise in sex hormone binding globulin with aging. There is a raise in sex hormone binding globulin with pregnancy. There can be a raise in sex hormone binding globulin with thyroid treatment. Okay. And then there is a raise in sex hormone binding globulin with things like anorexia. And actually they did a study where they looked at 1500 men um, and they found that higher protein diets were greatly associated with lower levels of sex hormone binding globulin, right? So anorexia plays a huge role in, de in increasing sex hormone binding globulin and decreasing your free testosterone, which makes a lot of sense. But on top of that, lower protein diets also can play a role in, um, raising sex hormone binding globulin and maybe giving you some of those symptoms of low androgens. So things that are associated, other things that are associated with higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin will be things like Alzheimer's and bone density issues. So um, with bone density, they actually did an observational study of 10,000 women and they found that in women with higher levels of sex hormone binding globulin, they had on average about two, over two times increase in bone density issues. So it's an important marker to look at as we age to make sure that we're keeping that testosterone in its free state so it's actually able to do the work that we're expecting it to do. Okay, so let's say we run our sex hormone binding globulin and we find out that it's low. The question is, is there anything we can do about it? Um, yeah, so there's actually good studies on both spearmint tea and green tea in, um, as a way to raise sex hormone binding globulin levels. So oftentimes in patients with polycystic ovary syndrome, uh, that is something that I will recommend that's a nice addition that's kind of easy to do. Um, in terms of high sex hormone binding globulin, high sex hormone binding globulin um, is something that we really want to consider, right? So it really does change a role in how we dose things. Um, and getting down high sex hormone binding globulin can take a while. So things that have been studied and shown to help reduce sex hormone binding globulin are things like nettles, um, zinc plays a role in decreasing sex hormone binding globulin, fish oil, vitamin D and magnesium all could play a role in decreasing sex hormone binding globulin. So um, if you are on hormone replacement um, and you're getting your testosterone run or if you're having symptoms of low testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin might actually be a really good place to start, right? So running free and total testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin can give you a lot of information because sometimes it's not actually a testosterone issue it's more of the bioavailability of testosterone that can create an issue and be creating symptoms um tell us in the comments below have you ever had your sex hormone binding globulin run and has your doctor ever talked to you about this we'll see you next week for our next video